Hi there, this is Groovin G, and welcome back to my channel. I'm sure some of you have clicked on this video to decide whether Renoise would be a good choice of door for you to use, and so I think it'd be important to therefore cover firstly some of the aspects where Renoise really shines and the production styles it leans towards, and then also to go over some of the tasks where you will really struggle when using Renoise. Personally, I think Renoise is fantastic for anyone making electronic music of any kind, but I think it especially leans towards complex drum programming featured in genres like Jungle and Breakcore. Whilst Renoise shines in those styles, the lack of a visual timeline can make it very difficult to oversee large and complicated arrangements. Furthermore, it also misses some of the audio editing and warping features of other doors, which make it challenging to use in things like film and TV. Live recording is much easier in a door such as Logic X as it possesses advanced features which are much better at handling complex tasks such as comping. Here we can combine the best bits of each of the takes into a greater whole. Finally, I found that trackers in general can be a little bit intimidating. From my own personal experience with Renoise, if you can overcome this little bump in the road, it actually has a very quick learning curve, and you will soon find yourself banging out Ragga Jungle breakbeats in no time. 303, bust, 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 filter, turning, 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 power. I think an important place to start when comparing Renoise to other doors is to just look at all their relative costs. One of the best things about Renoise is that you don't have to break the bank to get a copy. There's no extra subscriptions or paid upgrades and you really get a great amount of features for what you pay. It's really fantastic at interfacing with hardware and all the MIDI mapping features are very simple and effective to use. It's also great to sync up with other doors and even though Reason has recently stopped supporting Rewire, it still works for me in the current version of Logic X. There is also Redux which is a plug-in version of Renoise. Redux essentially acts as one Renoise instrument and can be loaded as a VST in any door you please. Overall, I find Renoise to be well programmed, light on the CPU and the UI generally just feels clean and intuitive to work in. Finally, one of the best things is that because it's so keyboard focused, you just need a laptop and off you go. With regards to the keyboard workflow, it's just damn fast. For anyone who wants to speed around the place and likes a quick and efficient workflow, with a few handy hotkeys at your disposal, you can really race around the place in Renoise. The F1 to F8 keys can be assigned to different windows and are used to quickly navigate around Renoise. I've also gone over my essential hotkeys in a couple of previous vids, but I just want to show you a couple of my favourite hotkeys which I've mapped to my numpad. Jump to the next or previous note is probably my most used and favourite hotkey and it's just such an essential one to map to your numpad. And finally, it's also very useful to map transpose and transpose octave because these are hotkeys that you just use all the time and I find it really handy to have them right there on the numpad. What I really love about Renoise is that so much of the writing process can be done solely with the keyboard. In other doors, you often find that the navigation can be done and jumping between the different windows can be done with hotkeys, but actually the writing process always involves a lot of mouse work. But actually in Renoise, the majority of your time in the pattern editor, you'll just solely be using the keyboard and it's really satisfying to use in this way. Now, I've already talked a little bit about how quick Renoise is to program and sequence when you compare it to other doors. One reason for this is that the note data, volume, panning and note delay columns as well as the effects automation columns are all visible on each track. This makes adjusting these parameters incredibly speedy and efficient. What's so great about having these options at your fingertips is that you lean into using them a lot more. It focuses you on these core practices of adding humanization and realism to your music by making them so accessible. 
One thing that can be quite intimidating, especially if you're just looking at other people using Renoids and you've never really got into the program yet, is the hexadecimal numbering system. Hexadecimal is essentially a numbering system commonly used in programming, and its main purpose here is so that you can fit more information on two digits than using a traditional numbering system. It's really not that complicated once you get into it, and for anyone who needs a bit of extra help, I've made this handy little guide which you can grab for free on my website. One thing I particularly love about Renoise is it puts you in this lovely little creative box. I said, empty your mind. This is partly due to the fact that it leans heavily towards a resampling workflow, where everything gets rendered down and then chucked back into a sampler. Often in doors like Logic and Ableton, there are just so many decisions to make about what your next step should be. For me, Reno seems to focus me on a few core practices and in turn, this really helps with my decision making. As I previously mentioned, the volume, delay, pan and automation columns are always visible and are super easy to adjust. Furthermore, all the native plugins have this open UI, so they're all visible whenever you select a track. Another thing I really love is the column automation and the focus on step automation or step editing. You can simply right click on any parameter in your track effects chain to record data onto that currently selected step. You can also interpolate between steps to make smoother glides between two different values. I find this type of automation to be extremely quick and effective whilst lacking some of the precision that maybe other doors possess. Another way that Renoise enables this creativity is through the tracker style effects. They are all laid out nicely in the Renoise effects command sheet and I've also added this helpful bar at the bottom displaying hex to percentage. Whilst the command sheet can definitely be a little overwhelming at first, I actually find myself using a couple of these effects all the time and the rest I don't really bother with. Without wasting too much time on this, I just want to quickly show you my two favourite effects and show you what they're capable of. The backwards command simply reverses the audio. The main thing to note here is that if it's put directly on a note, it will reverse from the end of the sample. However, if the audio is already playing, it will reverse it from the current playback position. The sample offset command, which is definitely my favourite, has a number of purposes, but probably the coolest is creating Akai style granular time stretching effects. What the time you have the dread? What the time you have the dread? Personally for me, I've always been way more interested in computers and electronics than I ever have been in live bands and traditional music. For me, Renoise is much more like learning a computer program than it is to write music in a conventional sense. This really leans towards people who can't play instruments and have little to no music theory. The focus towards sample based production in Renoise further adds to this, with it being somewhere in between working in an MPC and a door like Logic X. Finally, one crazy feature about Renoise which often gets overlooked is the ability to add slice markers after you've already written in MIDI data and all the MIDI data will move for you. I don't know of a single other door or sampler which has this feature and I find it really incredible. Its editor is also fantastic, and even the small things like being able to cut and paste chunks of samples around is really neat. This is really handy for being able to create cool snare effects out of individual drum elements. The sample editor also has incredible hit swapping and layering capabilities which I will go over in a future video, so stay in tune for that. But in this example I've just replaced all the hits of an Amen break with individual slices from other breaks and samples.
Right, so that's really it for me today. I'm just going to finish by suggesting two features I would really love to see in future updates of Renoise and then maybe if anyone who has any ideas can post in the comments I will get this all uploaded to the Renoise forums at some point and hopefully someone will see it all. Firstly, a tab to transient feature would literally be a game changer for me. Twisted Wave have done this better than any other program I use and it's such a delight to work with. It just makes adding slice markers so much more enjoyable and less tedious. And secondly, I would love to be able to modulate the start and end points of loops. This would really help give Renoise even greater synthesis and modulation capabilities. Anyways, thank you very much for sticking to the end of this vid and I will catch you very soon on my channel. Peace.